Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Fairfax. We hope you enjoy this sermon from a recent Sunday worship service. Complexity. Everything is feeling a bit complex right now. The world is a complex place. We're dealing with so many things happening in the world, it seems steeped in complexity. Some of those things have been complex for so long that it's amazing that we humans who have traveled to the moon and back, which was a pretty complex task, still can't seem to figure them out. This upcoming Thanksgiving holiday is a good example of the complexity in which we live. I used to think of Thanksgiving in a very Norman Rockwellian way. In other words, the family was gathered around the table. The wonderful smell of turkey was in the air. The pies were cooling on the counter. It was a mental image created when I was a child. It was culture, the practice of my middle class upbringing. It was a simple understanding of what it meant to celebrate this holiday of the landing of these wonderful white people on the indigenous people's shore, where they all got together and had a nice meal, and then a lovely parade sponsored by a department store in New York. <laughs> it wasn't until many years later that I discovered that among other things, the pilgrims brought with them from the old country to the new world Smallpox, chickenpox, syphilis, malaria, influenza, measles, and the bubonic plague. And talk about the simplicity of the Thanksgiving meal. I don't know about you folks, but in most of my Thanksgiving meals nowadays, along with the turkey comes gluten-free vegan stuffing, tofurkey, and the actually delicious tofu pumpkin pie. All this complexity is both accompanied by and made more complicated by all the noise that we must filter through every single day. Pundits, social media, social media influencers, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, MSNBC, Fox News, I won't ask for a raise of hands, CNN, Friends, Family, The Washington Post, The New York Times, The Fairfax Patch, emails, email threads with an abundance of opinions, and perhaps most importantly, Sunday Sermonators, <laughs> all who have something to say about so many things. The question then becomes, how do I sort through all of this? How do I quiet all that noise and do what I can to find that still, small voice inside? The still, small voice inside is actually a metaphor for a number of things. Remember, nothing is really that simple. Some think of it as the voice of God. Others find meaning thinking that it's the voice of one's conscience. I like to think of it as my guiding values, what lives in my heart, and the way that I would truly like to live in this world. This is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but I believe it needs to be done. And I wish I could tell you the best way to do this. There is clearly no one right way, and it's different for everyone. I know it would be great if there were simple answers to sift through the complexity of the noise to find our still small voice. But even if there isn't, that doesn't mean the effort shouldn't be made. There are a lot of strategies that we humans use to get in touch with our still small voice. Some that require solitude and others that require others. Of course, there's meditation and walking amongst the trees. There's listening to music or undertaking some form of art. For more participatory events, there's classes, group singing, therapy maybe, and even coming to services on a Sunday morning at UUCF. There are all kinds of practices. And I think what is important is just finding something that works for you 
and trying it, trying to quiet all the noise, trying to find something that will give you an opportunity to listen to you, to what's inside of you, what moves you, what centers you, what helps you live in a way that feels meaningful and powerful. Now, trying to find this voice doesn't mean in any way that the complexities of life will suddenly be completely clear and that all the struggles around them will be stripped away. Expecting that would be an unrealistic expectation. Part of stripping away some of the noise is to get to that place where it touches your faith. I'll tell you, I can read one story in the Huffington Post or see someone's Facebook update, and poof, my faith in my fellow humans can be challenged to no end. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to as much as possible, and as often as possible, do what I can to find my faith and deeply connect to it. I need it. I need to be in touch with my faith in order to have hope. And hope, again, Again, I can hear, read, or watch things day after day, and it challenges my hope. And yet, if I am not on a spiritual pursuit, having hope in my life, then I am lost. Faith and hope that brings me, is uh, that faith and the hope that it brings me is what propels me here on Sundays which is also one of the things that helps to sort through all the noise in my life and get in touch with that still small voice. Seeing all of you and being with all of you is a practice that brings me faith and hope. Now, none of that means anything, however, without love. I must find the love that bubbles up from that still small voice from that place within me, that smoldering ember that drives my desire for the world to be a more connected and more compassionate place. And sorting through the noise to find those three simple things, faith, hope, and love, can of course be complex. Because as author and educator Parker Palmer says, the deeper our faith, the more doubt we must endure. The deeper our hope, the more prone we are to despair. The deeper our love, the more pain its loss will bring. These are a few of the paradoxes we must hold as human beings. If we refuse to hold them in the hopes of living without doubt, despair, and pain, we also find ourselves living without faith, hope, and love. We are in complex times. I can't even begin to tell you the personal complexity I am struggling with with the Palestinian-Israel issue. And having studied political science and social transformation, I'm trying to sort through the interweaving of the impacts of historical white supremacy and late-stage capitalism on the dysfunction of the American political system. And things are complex at UUCF, as they are throughout Unitarian Universalism, not to mention how we do religious practice in this country and beyond. Yes, things are very complex. What I'm saying, however, what I'm suggesting, what I'm supporting, prescribing, and perhaps even praying for, is that all of us do whatever we can, however we can, to find the voice of spirit, a voice to help us open our minds and our hearts to hear the voice of faith and hope and love, even if it comes with occasional doubt, despair, and pain. Even if we simplify, we can never not expect some complications as we seek that deep and vital voice, the voice that connects us to the land on which we travel, the voice that brings warmth like the sun that heats our face, the voice that whispers at times softly like the breeze that blows the autumn leaves. 
when the arguments are done, when intellectual reasoning has run its course, when the possible solutions have hit a roadblock, there is actually one simple, clear, and unavoidable reality. Our collective lives are, in the end, totally dependent upon each other. So maybe in this Thanksgiving holiday week, with all the complexity it brings, with or without gathering with families of origin or families of choice or maybe with no family at all, maybe we can find a place to listen to that still small voice and with love and hope and faith, this voice might still have something powerful to say. May that be so. Happy Thanksgiving and amen. Thank you for listening to this sermon from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Fairfax. To listen to more UUCF sermons, open your favorite podcast app and search UU Fairfax Sermons. UU Fairfax is one word. Thank you.